Not revelation tis that waits, but our unfurnished eyes. Don't cry, Tim and I. We are far too grand, but we bolt the door tight to prevent a friend. Then we hide our brave face deep in our hand, not to cry, Tim and I. We are far too grand. Not to dream, he and me. Do we condescend? We just shut our brown eye to see the end. Tim, see cottages, but oh, so high. Then we shake, Tim and I, and lest I cry. Tim reads a little hymn, and we both pray. Please, sir, I and Tim, 
always lost the way. We must die, by and by. Clergymen say, Tim shall if I do, I too if he. Shall we arrange it, Tim, was so shy? Take us simultaneously, Lord, I, Tim, and me. I gave myself to him and took himself for pay. The solemn contract of a life was ratified this way. And I was strong, then so he let me lead him in. I was weak, and he was strong then, so I let him lead me home. Twasn't far, the door was near, twasn't dark, for he went to, twasn't loud, for he said nout, that was all I cared to know. Day knocked, and we was part, neither was strongest. Now he strove, and I strove too. We didn't do it though. The sun kept setting, setting, still no hue of afternoon. Upon the village I perceived, from house to house t'was noon. The dust kept dropping, dropping, still no dew upon the grass. But only on my forehead stopped and wandered in my face. My feet kept drowsing, drowsing, still my fingers were awake. Yet why so little sound myself unto my seeming make? How well I knew the night before, I could see it now. It is dying, I am doing, but I'm not afraid to know. My soul accused me, and I quailed, as tongues of diamond had reviled. All else accused me, and I smiled. My soul that morning was my friend. Her favour is the best disdain towards artifice of time, or men. But her disdain, twere lighter bare a finger of enamelled fire.
How many flowers fail in wood or perish from the hill without the privilege to know that they are beautiful? How many cast a nameless pod upon the nearest breeze, unconscious of the scarlet freight it bears to other eyes? I died for beauty, but was scarce adjusted in the tomb when one who died for truth was laying in an adjoining room. He questioned softly, why I failed? For beauty, I replied. And I for truth, themselves are one, we brethren are, he said. And so, as kinsmen met a night, we talked between the rooms until the moss had reached our lips and covered up our name. Why are you wasting your time with a married man? Answer me. That's my business. sacred closet when you sweep, entitled Memory, select a reverential broom and do it silently. It will be a labour of surprise. Besides, identity of other interlocutors, a probability. August, the dust of that domain, unchallenged, let it lie. You cannot supersede itself, but it can silence you.
Where does today's girl learn to be tomorrow's woman? At the movies? <laughs> On television? Helen, darling, your floors are so shiny. Yes, John. I used Brand X polish just this morning. Brand X. Helen, will you marry me? Between the super sex symbol of today's commercialism and TV's Brand X image, impending womanhood is alive and well. And where is that somewhere? Wherever there are campfire girls. Campfire reaches the girl reaching out for tomorrow and puts a promise before her. The promise of personal development, of friends and fun. The promise of womanhood. Campfire takes today's girl to tomorrow. I've none to tell me to but thee, so when thou failest, nobody. It was a little tie, it just held two, nor those it held, since somewhere thy sweet face has spilled beyond my boundary. The things were opposite, and me, and me it were, that ebbed from thee on some unanswering shore. Wouldst thou seek so? Just say that I the answer may pursue unto the lips it edded through, so overtaking thee. Where the daisies fit my head, tis easiest to lie. And every grass that plays outside is sorry, some for me. Where I am not afraid to go, I may confine my flower, who was not enemy of me, will gentle be to her. Nor separate herself and me by distances become. A single bloom will constitute departed or at home. The soul should always stand ajar, that if heaven inquire, he will not be obliged to wait or shy of troubling her. Depart, before the host hath slid the bolt unto the door, to search for the accomplished guest, her visitor no more.
The only ghost I ever saw was dressed in Mechlin, so he wore no sandal on his foot and stepped like flakes of snow. His gait was soundless like the bird, but rapid like the roe. His fashions quaint, mosaic, or haply mistletoe. His conversation seldom, his laughter like the breeze that dies away in dimples among the pensive trees. Our interview was transient, of me himself was shy, and God forbid I look behind since that appalling day. Pain has but one acquaintance, and that is death. Each one unto the other. Society enough. Pain is the junior party, by just a second's right. Death tenderly assists him, and then absconds from sight. Say the words, Tim. He fumbles at your soul as players at the keys. Before they drop full music on, he stuns you by degrees, prepares your brittle nature for the ethereal blow by fainter hammers, further heard, then nearer, then so slow. Your breath has time to straighten, your brain to bubble cool, deals one imperial thunderbolt that scalps your naked soul. Sorry, we will have to cool it for a while. When winds take forests in their paws, the universe is still. Say the words, Tim. You chose not to mention this until after we'd made love again. I think I'm being followed. <coughs> Say the words, Tim. Heart, we will forget him. You and I, tonight. You may forget the warmth he gave. I will forget the light. When you've done, pray tell me that I may straight begin.
haste, lest while you're lagging, I remember him. After great pain, a formal feeling comes. The nerves sit ceremonious like tombs. The stiff heart questions, was it he that bore, and yesterday or, or centuries before? The feet, mechanical, go round of ground or air or aught, a wooden way, regardless grown, a quartz contentment like a stone. This is the hour of lead. Remembered, if outlived, as freezing persons. Recollect the snow. First chill, then stupor, then the letting go. Glad is what happens when you use dial soap. It starts right out with a clean, fresh scent that's like nothing else. To get you going clean and fresh. Dial washes away the cause of odor on your skin. You just can't buy a better deodorant soap than Dial. And that's saying something. There is no silence in the earth, so silent as that endured, which uttered, would discourage nature and haunt the world. Going to heaven. I don't know when, but pray do not ask me how. Indeed, I'm too astonished to think of answering you. Going to heaven. How dim it sounds, and yet it will be done. As sure as flocks go home at night unto the shepherd's arm. Perhaps you're going too. Who knows? If you should get there first, save a little space for me, close to the two I lost. The smallest robe will fit me, and just a bit of crown, for you know we do not mind our dress when we are going home. I'm glad I don't believe it, for it would stop my breath, and I'd like to look a little more, but such a curious earth. I'm glad they did believe it, whom I have never found, since the mighty autumn afternoon I left them in the ground.
hard to hold here, you can only do that one. One time, you know, it was really bad. Mm, I didn't know it was bad. Longing is like the seed that wrestles in the ground, believing if it intercede, it shall at length be found. The hour and the chime, each circumstance unknown, what constancy must be achieved before it see the sun. Remorse is memory awake, her part is all astir. A presence of departed acts at window and at door. Its past set down before the soul and lighted with a match. Perusal to facilitate and help belief to stretch. Remorse is cureless, the disease not even God can heal. For tis his institution and the adequate of hell. The spirit laughs, but in what mode? Below the body speaks, but as the spirit furnishes a part, it never talks. The music in the violin does not emerge alone, but arm in arm with touch. Yet touch alone it is not a tune. The spirit lurks within the flesh like tides within the sea that make the water live estranged. What? Would either be, does not know now, or does it cease, that which to this is done, resuming at a mutual date with every future one? Instinct pursues the adamant, extracting this reply. Adversity, if it may be, or wild prosperity. The rumour's gate was shut so tight before my mind was sown that not even a prognostic's push I could make a dent thereon. Wild nights, wild nights. Were I with thee, wild nights should be a luxury. Futile the winds to a heart in port. Done with the compass, done with the chart. Rowing in Eden, oh, the sea. Might I but more tonight in thee.
Once upon a time, there was a beautiful forest where everything was all lovely and green and peaceful. Sunlight fell in ribbons of daylight through its trees. Birds flew in a quiet air above it. Deer and rabbits found secret hiding places to play. For it was truly a beautiful place. And then one day, into this beautiful emerald forest, a new creature came. A creature called man. And man brought with him fire to warm him against the night. Only with his fire, man did not bring caution and the fire got away from him suddenly. And the beautiful forest was no more. And yet there might easily be a different ending. For if man is careful with his fire, he need never say, once upon a time, there was a beautiful forest. The soul has bandaged moments when, too appalled to stir, she feels some ghastly fright come up and stop to look at her. Salute her with long fingers, caress her freezing hair, sip goblin from her very lips. The lover hovered o'er unworthy that a thought so mean accost a theme so fair. The soul has moments of escape when, bursting all the doors, she dances like a bomb abroad and swings upon the hours, as do the bee, delirious born, long dungeoned from his rose. Touch liberty, then know no more but noon and paradise, the soul's retaken moments when fell on lead along with shackles on the plumped feet and staples in the song. The horror welcomes her again. These are not braid of tongue. my garden yet, lest that should conquer me. I haven't quite the strength now to break it to the bee. I will not name it in the street, for shops would stare at me, that one so shy, so ignorant, should have the face to die. The hillsides must not know it, where I have rambled so, nor tell the loving forests the day that I shall go, nor lisp it at the table, nor heedless, by the way, hint that within the riddle, one will walk today. I was just thinking about you. Me too.
What were you thinking? The skies can't keep their secret. They tell it to the hills. The hills just tell the orchards, and they the daffodils. A bird by chance that goes that way soft overheard the whole. If I should bribe the little bird, who knows what she would tell? I think I won't, however. It's finer not to know. If summer were an axiom, what sorcery had snow? So keep your secret, father. I would not, if I could, know what the sapphire fellows do in your new fashion. Shall we go somewhere quiet? To wait an hour is long, if love be just beyond. To wait eternity is short, if love reward the end. Somehow myself survived the night and entered with the day. That it be saved, the saved suffice, without the formula. Henceforth I take my living place as one commuted lead, a candidate for morning chance, but dated with the dead. Love is that later thing than death, more previous than life, confirms it at its entrance and usurps it on itself, tastes death, the first to hand the sting, the second to its friend, disarms the little interval, deposits him with God, then hovers, an inferior guard, lest this beloved charge need, once in an eternity, a smaller
It bloomed and dropped a single noon, the flower distinct and red. I, passing through another noon, another in its stead will equal grow, and though no more, but came another day to find the species disappeared, the same locality. The sun in place, no other fraud on nature's perfect sum. Had I but lingered yesterday, was my retrievless blame. Much flowers of this and further zones have perished in my hands, for seeking its resemblance, but unapproached it stands. The single flower of the earth that I, in passing by, unconscious was, great nature's face passed infinite by me. He found my being, set it up, adjusted it to place, then carved his name upon it and bade it to the east. Be faithful in his absence, and he would come again with the equipage of amber that time to take it home. Where does today's girl learn to be tomorrow's woman? At the movies? <laughs> On television? Helen, darling, your floors are so shiny. Yes, John. I used Brand X polish just this morning. Brand X. Helen, will you marry me? Somewhere between the super sex symbol of today's commercialism and TV's Brand X image, impending womanhood is alive and well. And where is that somewhere? Wherever there are campfire girls. <laughs> Fire reaches the girl reaching out for tomorrow and puts a promise before her, the promise of personal development, of friends and fun, the promise of womanhood. Campfire takes today's girl to tomorrow. I give to see his face. I give, I give my life. Of, of course, that, but that isn't enough. Stop just a minute. Let me think. I'd give my biggest bobolink. That makes two. Him and life. You know who June is. I'd give her. Roses a day from Zanzibar, and lily tubes like wells, bees by the furlong, straits of blue, navies of butterflies sailed through, and dappled cowslip dells. Then I have shares in primrose banks, daffodil dowries, spicy stocks, dominions broad as dew, bags of doubloons, adventurous bees bought me from firmamental seas, and purple from Peru. Now I have bought it, Shylock, say? Sign me the bond. I vow to pay to her who pledges this one hour of her sovereign's face. Ecstatic contract, niggard grace, my kingdom's worth of bliss.
The sun went down, no man looked on, the earth and I, alone, were present at the majesty. He triumphed and went on. The sun went up, no man looked on, the earth and I, and one, a nameless bird, a stranger, were witness for the crown. Make me a picture of the sun, so I can hang it in my room and make believe I'm getting warm when others call it day. Draw me a robin on a stem, so I am hearing him, I'll dream. And when the orchards stop their tune, put my pretense away. Don't go back to sleep. <laughs> a poor torn heart, a tattered heart that sat it down to rest, nor noticed that the ebbing day flowed silver to the west. Nor noticed night did soft descend, nor constellation burn, intent upon the vision of latitudes unknown. The angels, happening that way, this dusty heart espied, tenderly took it up from the toil and carried it to God. There, sandals for the barefoot, there, gathered from the gales, do the blue heavens by the hand lead the wandering sails.
I'm lost. So am I. Who are you? The man of your dreams. Or am I the woman of your nightmares? I'm lost. So am I. One blessing had I than the rest, so larger to my eyes, that I stopped gauging, satisfied, for this enchanted size. It was the limit of my dream, the focus of my prayer, a perfect, paralyzing bliss, contented as despair. I knew no more of want or cold. Phantasms both became of this new value in the soul, supreme earthly sum. The heavens below, the heaven above, obscured with ruddier blue. Life's latitudes lent over, full, the judgment perished too. Why bliss so scantily disperse? Why paradise defer? Why floods be served to us in bowls? I speculate no more. Don't go back to sleep. I'm lost. So am I. Three times we parted, breath, and I, three times, he would not go, but strove to stir the lifeless fan. The waters strove to stay. Three times the billows tossed me up, then caught me like a ball, then made blue faces in my face and pushed away a sail that crawled leagues off. I like to see, for thinking while I die, how pleasant to behold a thing where human faces be. The waves grew sleepy, breath did not, the winds like children lulled, then sunrise kissed my chrysalis and I stood up and lived. It was summer in the evening, in the evening after the rain. We were driving, she and I. The road was winding as rivers wind. We were speeding like birds, like incredible birds, feeling the wind speeding into the wind it was summer in the evening in the evening after the rain we were passing crowds passing clouds faster than the moon driving uncaring she and i faster and faster our car was like a comet we were speeding through our lives there was no way to stop. Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? Good morning, Midnight. I'm coming home. Day got tired of me. How could I of him? Sunshine was a sweet place. I liked to stay, but Morn didn't want me now, so good night, Day. I can look, can't I, when the east is red? The hills have a way, then, that put the heart abroad. You are not so fair, Midnight. I chose Day, but please take a little girl, he turned away. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. It is easy to work when the soul is at play, but when the soul is in pain, the hearing him put his playthings up makes work difficult then. It is simple to ache in the bone or on the rind, but gimlets among the nerve, mangled daintier, terribler, like a panther in a glove. be lonelier without the loneliness I'm so accustomed to my fate. Perhaps the other piece would interrupt the dark and crowd the little room, too scant by cubits, to contain the sacrament of him. I am not used to hope. It might intrude upon its sweet parade, blaspheme the place ordained to suffering. It might be easier to fail with land in sight than gain my blue peninsula to perish of delight. Why are you doing this to me? What?
Why are you doing this to me? Was my one glory. Let it be remembered. I was owned of thee. I cannot live with you. It would be life. And life is over there, behind the shelf. The sexton keeps the key to putting up our life. He is porcelain, like a cup. Discard the housewife, quaint or broke. A newer Sevra pleases, old ones crack. I could not die with you, for one must wait to shut the other's gaze down. You could not. And I... Could I stand by and see you freeze without my right of frost, death's privilege? Nor could I rise with you because your face would put out Jesus's, that new grace. Glow plain and foreign on my homesick eye except that you and he shone closer by. They'd judge us how for you served heaven, you know, or sought to. I could not. Because you saturated sight and I had no more eyes for sordid excellence as paradise. And were you lost, I would be. Though my name rang loudest on the heavenly fame. And were you saved and I condemned to be where you were not self were hell to me. So we must meet apart. You there, I here, with just the door ajar, that oceans are, and prayer, and that white substance. Despair. part of my life, the way lots of beautiful things are, like men. I mean, see the way my mind works? Music and good-looking guys. But those men better smell good-looking, too. I like them best when they wear English leather. English leather is like a beautiful folk song to me, fresh and natural. So all my men wear English leather, or they wear nothing at all. You'll find a large selection of English leather Christmas gift sets in fine stores everywhere.
When roses cease to bloom, sir, and violets are done. When bumblebees in solemn flight have passed beyond the sun. The hand that paused to gather upon this that summer's day will idle lie in Auburn. Then take my flowers, pray. Said death to passion, Give of thine an acre unto me, and said passion through contracting breast, A thousand times thee nay. Or death from passion, all his east, he, sovereign as the sun, resituated in the west, and the debate was done. Under the light, yet under. Under the grass and the dirt. Under the beetle's cellar, under the clover's root. Further than arm could stretch, were it giant long. Further than sunshine could, were the day year long. Over the light, yet over. Over the arc of a bird over the comet's chimney, over the cubit's head, further than guests can gallop, further than riddle ride, before the disc to the distance between ourselves and the dead.
I have a bird in spring which for myself doth sing. The spring decoys, and as the summer nears, and as the rose appears, Robin is gone. Yet I do not repine, knowing that bird of mine, though flown, learneth beyond the sea, melody new for me, and will return. Fast in safer hands, held in truer land, are mine. And though they now depart, tell I my doubting heart, they're thine. In serener bright, in a more golden light, I see each little doubt and fear, each little discord here, removed. Then will I not repine, knowing that bird of mine, though flown, shall in a distant tree, bright melody for me, return. I gained it so by climbing slow, by catching at the twigs that grow. Between the bliss and me, it hung so high, as well the sky, attempt by strategy. I said I gained it, this was all. Look how I clutch it, lest it fall. And I a pauper go, unfitted by an instant's grace, for the contented beggar's face I wore an hour ago. Transportation.